Hi, this is Steve. A chance remark about J.K. Rowling being involved in some controversy got me talking this summer recently, and they admitted that they knew nothing about the subject, which was transgender rights. We didn't talk long, but I said that I would go away and write something which I hoped would explain how I have come to my view. When I started, I soon realised that I needed to use some of the philosophical and psychological learnings I've made over the last few years of study. So here is my first attempt to look at the situation in that way. I'm always open to revising my ideas over time. I've called it societal change, foolishness and wisdom, theory and a contemporary example. Bit of a mouthful, but that's what it is. I recently watched a talk by cognitive scientist, Dr. John Verveke. It can be found on his channel and also the Institute H21 channel. If you don't want to watch it all, watch from 26 minutes, 30 seconds in for a few minutes. But here's a quote. Knowledge deals with ignorance. Wisdom deals with foolishness. Knowledge and wisdom are not the same thing. You can be very intelligent and very foolish, and there is no contradiction there at all. To be wise, you have to be able to take multiple sp perspectives of the thing you are considering and find, where possible, a meeting point. This takes a real desire because taking multiple perspectives requires serious effort and can also require you to take seriously and find value in viewpoints you don't like or share. Single perspective, closed-minded tribalism is so much easier, but without making that effort to look at the problem from multiple perspectives, you can't see the bias within the single perspective that you've inhabited, often unthinkingly, or perhaps I should say unchallenged for years. It's the old saying, you can't see the wood for the trees. You can find yourself expending all your effort merely to rationalise in knee-jerk reactive fashion why what you already believe is right and any alternative view wrong. Never stepping back outside the trees to see the wider landscape, the wider perspective, and genuinely questioning in good faith whether this long-held single perspectival, perspectival belief is in reality the best one. As Plato pointed out, we are finite beings. We are not gods. We are bound to circumstances and fate in powerful ways. And if we forget that, we fall into hubris. Hubris, or arrogance, prevents us opening our hearts and minds to seek truth. So, onto the specific subject I was asked to explain my thoughts on, the trans rights issue. In the same way that falling feels like flying until you pull the cord on the parachute and it doesn't open, so policies that massively change the accepted societal norms, like the Scottish National Party have just passed into law, allowing people of one biological sex to identify as, and then be treated in every way as if they really are the opposite biological sex, can feel like a positive change until the reality of what it actually means in practice hits home. For example, biological and often physically unaltered men in female sports, in female bathrooms, in female prisons, etc., will not end well for far too many biological women. You could say that even one is too many, but it will be a lot more, sadly, than one. And rest assured, it will be the vulnerable, and particularly, of course, women. Isn't it interesting how biological women who want to be seen as biological males don't cause anything like the trouble that the other way around does. But specifically, women from lower socioeconomic groups who don't have the resources and the education to avoid the problems, they are the ones who will lose out most. I suggest that what we see in a governmental policy like this is a single perspective ideology filled with godlike hubris, foolishness. While I shouldn't have to state this, I will, in the hope, probably in vain, of preventing the more hysterical feedback. I'm with J.K. Rowling on this issue, whose view can be summarised as, 
dress how you like and identify how you like. But do not tell other people that they must pretend biology isn't real and that you are reducing or removing their rights in order to make yourself feel better. Now, lest people again jump to the wrong conclusion, wisdom is certainly not refusing change. Obviously, how could it be? Rather, it's being able to look at an issue from many perspectives and tell which societal changes will be overall positive to society and which will be overall negative without having to risk conducting the experiment in real life to find out. Some experiments are simply too dangerous if they go wrong. See communism and fascism, but also the Wuhan gain of function lab leak for a contemporary practical example. And I put it to you that the trans rights agenda in its extreme version is another example. We are too ready, I believe, to let people off with foolishness if it doesn't directly affect us. We are too ready to let people off with foolishness if in this particular case we happen to agree with the end result. We are too ready to let people off with foolishness just to be non-judgmental, because being non-judgmental is supposedly nice and being judgmental nasty. I know that's a Christian attitude, but it's not that simple. Like all catchy sound bites, it's yes, but. Speak to a rape victim, or the parent of a child killed by a drunk driver, or the parent of a child being bullied at school, for example. Don't judge, don't speak out, keep silent, pretend it's okay. Really? Some things must be judged, yes, even if in the moment it hurts someone's feelings. Otherwise, we will have either anarchy and chaos or slavery and docile compliance to any imposed fad of the bullies of the moment. What are we saying when we say, oh, we mustn't judge other people? We all make judgments about others every day. The fact we only think it doesn't mean we didn't make the judgment. Do we think accidental foolish actions or the foolish actions of the well-meaning are somehow acceptable? So it's the intention that matters, not the results of the action? This may feel right on a superficial level, but surely it's nonsense if you think more deeply. Indeed, such an attitude is itself another somewhat self-indulgent foolishness. The outcome of an action has to be the crux of the matter because some actions, some foolishnesses, have adverse consequences on others which didn't need to happen. Some actions lack wisdom, and wisdom should be at the heart of all we do as much as possible. In complex societies like ours, there are questions for which there is no perfect answer. And believing that every problem for every group or individual can or must always be solved is another piece of foolishness. And when it comes down to it, the total acceptance of the trans activist agenda by the Scottish government is, I believe, a case in point. Sometimes the best we can do will still leave a minority feeling unhappy. Pretending otherwise, which beliefs and policies like this do, is more foolishness. Wishful thinking is not wise. Pie-in-the-sky utopian thinking is not wise. Trying to make one very small group happy by giving them rights, the basis for which are not borne out by accepted and proven scientific knowledge? Really? Trying to make one very small group happy by giving them rights that require you to remove the rights of others? Really? Boy, you've got to tread very carefully doing that. And the SNP with their Green Party coalition partners have rammed this through with foolish speed. It is single perspective ideology and great hubris writ large. It's foolishness. John Stuart Mill spoke of the tyranny of the majority, and certainly that can lead to bad results. But even worse is a tyranny of a minority. At least the majority getting their own way has some natural logic to it. 
but we are currently living through a tyranny of the minority and not of the minority you may immediately think I mean, but of the elite at the top of society around the world who feel themselves untouchable in any meaningful way. The transgender activist agenda couldn't possibly gain the traction it has without the support of many powerful and influential people. What you or I think of it doesn't matter in the slightest if the elite, the powerful, the influential in society don't want it. They are imposing, allowing, facilitating, society altering policies of which the trans agenda is only one. Others are mass immigration, critical race theory, intersectional theory, COVID alarmism, climate alarmism and the like, all hiding behind a claim of safety, of kindness, of tolerance, of inclusivity, of progress. And it's irrelevant how many of these specific issues we agree or disagree with, because the gaining of our agreement is totally irrelevant to those pushing them forward. Their purpose in turning society upside down is the belief that they, the elite class, the enlightened good guys as they see themselves, will still be in charge after it all goes to hell in a handcart. And their position in creating a new society will not only be unaffected, but strengthened. Strengthened by diminishing, if not removing, democracy. Leaving the wealthy, the influential, the well-positioned, a free, unconstrained run at forging their utopia. Removing the ability of the majority opinion to change or even influence policy, that's what these elites are after. They are acting from a single perspective with godlike hubris. It's foolishness. So my working hypothesis, which seems to fit what is actually happening, despite the official narrative, is that they are trying to bring about a global technocratic dictatorship of the elite class by destabilizing the societal norms of the liberal democracies in terms of social behavior, energy availability, food availability, travel availability, and finance availability. I'll say that again because it's the crux of my hypothesis. They are trying to bring about a global technocratic dictatorship of the elite class by destabilizing the societal norms of the liberal democracies in terms of social behavior, energy availability, food availability, travel availability, and finance availability. It's these things that the individuals within a democracy rely on to understand and function independently of the apparatus of the state. It's these things which are the anchor within society for the ordinary citizen. Perhaps I should just say that when I keep saying they or the elite, they can be symbolized and embodied by the World Economic Forum, which is basically a club of the most wealthy and influential people, the self-styled elite of global society. They are using a host of seemingly unconnected foolishnesses to keep us all distracted and arguing in the hope that we won't realize that there is a much larger creeping authoritarian agenda. We can't see the wood for all the trees they have us frightened of and bickering about. And I've already given examples of these. Distracting trees, exaggerated alarmism over climate and COVID, wars, energy shortages, cost of living problems, mass immigration, gender theory, critical race theory. The constant use of fear, confusion and division is destabilizing society in order to distract us from noticing the overarching purpose. Which is what? Well, in my hypothesis, it looks remarkably like Huxley's Brave New World. That was written in the early 1930s, so of course the details will be different, but the basis of it seems to be coming to pass, certainly at, at the high or meta level. The population is forced into groups, intersectionality. Groups of greater or lesser importance from which it is next to impossible to escape, and the only people with any real autonomy and who get to decide everything are those in the top elite group, Huxley's alphas, the World Economic Forum members and their wannabe 
acolytes. The rules don't apply to them, rather they decide the rules that they apply to everyone else. We saw this in practical terms when so many people in positions of power and influence were caught ignoring the COVID rules, rules they had put in place or supported. And in a wider context, almost daily, we see stories of those with money or influence getting away with behaviour an ordinary person would not, of mega wealthy unelected people and corporations buying undue influence over governments and the administration of states. I am concerned that the World Economic Forum groupthink is that representative democracy hasn't produced the right results. Take Brexit, take Trump. It's had its chance and failed, and so must be done away with. It can't be said openly for obvious reasons, so it is being done by stealth, using fear, confusion and division to destabilise society, as already explained. It's a regression to the time before the franchise was made universal to all adults, when the elites decided everything and the rest had to simply accept it and know their place. That this is, in fact, a regression back to the historical norm, elites being in charge and the plebs doing as they're told, doesn't make it right or good, and it certainly isn't progress, quite the reverse. The enslavement of humans by other humans has always been the historical norm, but few would argue this means it's a good thing or that we should return to it. And yet, fundamentally, this is what's happening with our democracy by the rapid overturning of key societal norms. If something is foolish, it shouldn't be happening. It is not in any way wise to look the other way just because the issue isn't currently affecting us, or it's too much effort to fight it, or at this moment it seems to be benefiting us, for one day it won't. Or we want to tell ourselves what kind, tolerant people we are, or the people doing it convince us they truly believe in it, or they bribe us in some way, or they distract us by manufacturing lots of trees to get us lost among. Foolishness, whether accidental or well-meaning or knowingly dangerous, is still foolishness and must be identified, called out and resisted. Now, this must not be done with hatred in our hearts. It's not a witch hunt, but it must be done. That's wisdom, but it also takes courage because those creating all the distracting foolishnesses are both very determined and very powerful. They're playing for high stakes, the effective rule of the world. And they will propagandize and bend, break or simply make new rules as they deem necessary to win. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.